Hey, what's going on my friends? Welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Victor and this is going to be a, a personal update, a vlog. I'm here in beautiful Sedona, Arizona. I'll give you a little peek here. This is the conclusion of my road trip that I have been on. Here's Bell Rock over here. It's pretty sweet. The lighting's not ideal. Otherwise, I'd definitely prefer to have that in the backdrop. So anyways, yeah, man, I'm in Sedona, Arizona. One of the most beautiful, spiritually charged places I've ever personally been to. I know there's a lot of places like this in the world, but this is so far my favorite as far as that goes. And again, today I'm just going to talk about a few different things that's going on with my own personal life. This is not going to be necessarily spiritual awakening advice, though sometimes uh, lessons can stem out of my own experiences. This is just more so I can sort of share more of what's going on in the real Victor's life with those of you who are, are fans of mine and are following me and want to get to know me on a deeper level. That's the whole idea of this video. So I'll give you a quick little backdrop. Most of you who have been watching me kind of understand that I have been traveling around the country for the past two, two and a half months or so with my family in a, in a big R, a fifth wheel and RV. And we've gone to a lot of neat places. Most recently we are in Michigan seeing some friends and family. And we got there and we decided to stay a little bit longer because it was just kind of nice seeing everybody. It's been a while. And we're on our way back now. We're back on the west coast time zone which has been great for me and again we're in sedona arizona heading back out to our hometown in san diego in just a few days here so one of the there's a few things i want to kind of talk about one of them is something that has been going on with me that i would imagine you guys can relate to it's certainly a pattern i've noticed in my life on many different junctures of my awakening notably during very powerful energy uh potent times the way I feel now is very reminiscent of how I felt back in 2012 when I became kind of aware of all of that this is all taking place where big shifts, big changes were kind of uh, being asked of me based on the new influx of my, of the vibrations, the energies, however you want to look at it. And I kind of feel that way now. I feel like this whole, this trip I've been on has been almost like a lifetime in and of itself, abundant with experiences and learning lessons. And now I feel like almost like a, what's the word, uh, like a rat in a cage. I just feel like ready to kind of bust out and implement all the different things that have been sort of just uh, popping up in my consciousness in terms of my own personal life and, and direction and who I want to be, where I want to go and so forth. I've been, it's been kind of on hold. I've been getting all these insights and, gl and gleaning all these lessons, but then we've been on the road and it's just sort of chaotic with children and trying to maintain an online endeavor like I have here and then visiting people. It's been crazy. I've not been able to implement my game plan that has been, I've been racking up scrolls and scrolls of information and now I'm very anxious to get back and kind of reground myself and apply it. One of the things I feel inspired to do is just be the best I can be on all levels. Stop, stop, like uh, really uh, go through my personal life with a fine tooth comb and finally just pluck out all of those gray hairs, all of the, the, the things in my life that are not in full, perfect alignment with the man I want to become little habits, little time wasters, just within my personal relationships, just, uh, just a lot of them are like are minor tweaks, I would say, with kind of a big implication. And I just feel like totally fired up and ready to do this. And I found that this sort of situation of having like a lot of things I want to do, but like the time hasn't yet kind of stood still long enough for me to do it. That's been always kind of present for me. Like uh, I make myself wait sometimes. And what the, the, there's always a positive result I found is that when the time finally comes, when I finally get to San Diego, there will be kind of an accumulation of that burning passion to implement certain things into my life that maybe wouldn't have taken hold as well if I would have just kind of implemented them one by one on the spot. I feel the absence of them and it's disharmonic to me. So the moment I have Again, I have like a clean slate. It's, it's on like Donkey Kong. I'm gonna, I'm gonna rock it out. And I'm gonna apply this on all levels in my life. My health, 
I, I know I'm a personal trainer. I know how to kind of manipulate my physique, my body weight, my body fat percentage, etc. And also get away with a lot of bullshit at the same time. Like, like I can drink on a diet. I can eat kind of unhealthy food sometimes. And I know how to like cheat real big and go out and splurge and have a big horrible dinner with dessert and stuff. I know how to kind of get away with it. But even though that might be true on a, like a physical level, it's starting to affect my clarity. And, and what I do now online and coaching, it's dependent upon it. Almost a 100% consistent state of me being the best I can be. Otherwise, it's a disservice to myself, my family, and everybody else who, who follows me. So the little things in my life, I definitely am excited to take charge. And in terms of my diet, I mean this like... Uh, just stop having that, that lazy mindset of I can get away with it. There's gonna be, I'm going to start eating just really, just really pure and natural foods, no, no processed foods. Not that, again, I was not doing this in abundance, but I was doing a little bit. And a little bit is, I notice the effects, not so much on like how I look, just more about somewhat my look, my, like my radiance is not quite always there, but also more importantly, my, my level of clarity. I just feel inspired to be as like zen-like and clear as possible. And so that's just one of the ways. I'm not going to go into the, the thousand different things I plan on doing. This is just kind of an example of what uh, this past couple months is this big energy is feeling like it's how it's affecting me. It's making me more aware of things in my life that no longer belong there and are not in real harmony with where I want to go. At the same time, sufficiently fueling me with just positive motivation rather than like feeling the need to do it as some sort of like, like, I got to cut this out. It's more like I'm excited to cut this out and add this in. It's more like I feel ready and excited about it. So hopefully you guys are feeling that too. It's always good to, it's sometimes it's challenging when we're met with a bunch of things in our life that says this, 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 and this is not ideal. But it's always nice when you feel confident and ready to kind of make those changes and then experience the beautiful benefits of them. Another thing I wanted to kind of touch on, this is kind of a more of a somewhat recent development for me, and it involves relationships. And we all know that our relationships fluctuate and change a lot when we go through a spiritual awakening. Usually, initially, you become very acutely aware of people's true colors. We start to see the dark side that we never once saw. And, but that can lead to sort of a premature conclusion that I don't want them in my life, I don't want to be doing this, I don't like that, and I'm alone. I went through that. It's very normal too because it's just you're so sensitive to the egos in people. But eventually what I found as the years progressed, I started to see that same darkness within myself. I realized that, wow, I'm no better, I'm no different, and even though the dark side of human beings sort of like popped out at me at a time and it was shocking, like I didn't know it was there to that extent, it's not all that's there. There's other, the divinity, there's divine qualities of everybody. Even the darkest of human beings are a, a blessed, divine, awesome soul. And as I just kind of continue going forward, that is starting to kind of glow and call to me. And just kind of coming back around in a practical sense, I was indicating before that for a while, I felt like me and my wife, my family, we felt like just getting away from everybody, you know? And that lasted kind of a while. And then we went back and it was kind of like, you know, there's a lot of growth and stuff going on. But now it's more like I can be around people that once um, caused emotional unrest. Not saying it's their fault. I can see now it is more like both, like me. Um, but I can be around people who I thought might have been, I would have like ruled out as just not being a part of my life as much. And I, I've gone back around them and the, the, it just come around full circle. And through just more of a mutual acceptance and a not needing to change and not resisting the darkness within each other allows for kind of a mutual common ground no matter what no matter who's on the spiritual path and who's not it doesn't matter we're all on the same level when it comes down to it anyways and on that level i've been able to create just very beautiful and pleasant engagements with my my friends and family and again people who i've sort of disconnected from to an extent for a little while there i found like a, a reuniting kind of energy that was i think we both felt and it was just really cool and it was just nice to see that because it's un it, it was kind of lonely there for a while when I thought I was so different. 
But now that I realize, again, we're all mostly, there's more sameness versus a differentiation. And if we can focus on how we're all kind of human beings, doing our best, learning our lessons, individual to us and what we chose, then there can be harmonious relationships, I believe, among people who would maybe have thought not possible. Anyways, that was kind of my, my little thing because it's, uh, I know it's a focal point in relationships and the turmoil and the changes for quite a while there and they can be kind of rocky and a lot of triggering each other. But again, I've found that that process has, it kind of comes back around with a very pleasant homecoming in a sense. This next thing I'm going to share, it might, it might be not uh, ideal for some of you, and I, I apologize, but I'm no longer, at least for now, going to be making, pumping out daily YouTube videos. For a, quite a while, I struggled with this, feeling like it was time to kind of wind myself down. Not that I'm going to stop my mission, not that I'm going to stop altogether, but I'm finding that daily videos are now not balanced for me. There's too many things I want to do in relation to this that extend beyond the scope of just YouTube videos. I want to start writing ebooks. I want to expand my coaching because I'm seeing how profoundly working with people, how, how much it's actually helping people improve their lives. And I'm realizing that I can help other people help other people in a very deep and transformative way. And so there's that. And I just have all these ideas, all these things I want to create. And, but there's just not enough time and, and not so much time because shooting a video is not that time consuming. It's more of like the creative energy that, that goes into doing it on a daily basis. It's becoming unsustainable for me to do that and implement all these uh, as well divinely sort of inspired ideas I have. So I'm going to temporarily kind of break away from the daily, the daily grind in a sense and, uh, and start diversifying. So a lot of people, I don't know if you know, I have an email list. I have a, like an Ascension newsletter where I email people once or twice a week, not like in a spammy way. And I, I present content very similar to this. And you're welcome to get on my list. Uh, sometimes on days you don't hear me in a video, I'll have maybe sent a nice long email kind of expressing a similar message. It just, I like, I like, I'm a Gemini. I'm a jack of all trades. It's hard for me to kind of do one thing for a long period. I'm always kind of shifting and changing. So that's kind of one of the, the shifts I've been going through as far as that goes. Um, I also found that for me, about three or four videos each week feel very inspired, very like, like I don't do any work. It's just like ideas pop into my brain and I know I got to talk about that. And that those are the videos that people are like, oh my goodness, dude, you in my head? It's not that. It's not that at all. It's just we're all connected and I get the ideas at the right time. And then even sometimes you guys will see that particular video on a different day. So it's not, it's nothing too crazy and psychic. -y. I wish I could take credit, but it's, it's both of us. It's me. Impl me taking action on my divinely inspired ideas and then you following your own intuition which is leading you to the right information at the right time. So anyways, I feel like that occurs not every single time. There's a few videos each week usually that I'm really, it's more like I'm really just fighting for ideas and, and, and struggling to kind of pump something out just for the sake of maintaining my daily commitment. And that to me is becoming more tiresome and it just doesn't, it feels like I, I should free myself up so that energy can express in other ways what it feels like it wants to. So anyways, I just wanted to kind of give you guys a heads up just so you don't think I, like, I'm not acknowledging the fact that I'm not making as many videos. Um, I'm still very passionate about this. And I also suspect down the line, once I've kind of created more of my foundation, then I'll have more time and I will very likely come back around to the daily videos because there was a, a lot of this time. It's, I was inspired every day to make a video and it worked for me, but I have to also acknowledge my life path and, and the random twists and turns that, that come in to my life. And this is definitely one of them that I'm choosing to acknowledge. And lastly, I believe it's going to lead to me just being better at what I do, not in a skillful way, but just being a, a better representation of a, I don't call myself a spiritual teacher, but I essentially, I guess that's similar, that's the closest label I can come up with, but I want to really 
own up to that and just be a, as good of an example as I possibly can. And I know the time and energy that will be freed up to me, I'm gonna put back into myself so I can keep learning and growing and sharing. Okay, that's about it, folks. I appreciate you watching. Thank you for your continued support. All of the, the positive vibes you guys send to me that is so clearly seen from me as just so heartfelt and genuine. I just want to take this time to thank you for that very sincerely. Thank you very much. I do appreciate it. It helps lift me out of bad days. I'm assuming if as much, if not more, then maybe my videos can help you. So this is not just Victor's thing and thank you, Victor. It's, it's really a joint effort. And that's why I think it works so well. And that's what I see maybe happening on the planet more and more often. When people follow their hearts, that, that direction, is in harmony with the whole. And I think a lot of people are waking up to that heartfelt, um, that source of guidance within them. And in a roundabout way, the more people to follow that will just lead to a more harmonious uh, earth life experience, I think. So again, don't, don't thank me. I thank you for thanking me and I appreciate it. And I know what you're saying, but again, I want to kind of point that out, that it's not just me. It's the, the energy changing, and all of us are yielding to it as best we can. So thank you for doing your part as well. Without you, there would be no me. So anyways, I'm going to bounce. I've been getting blasted by this freaking straight-up crazy Sedona sun all morning. So i got to bounce. Have an amazing day. See you guys soon. Namaste. Real quick, I just want to kind of talk about the... Oh, Sedona for a second, man. This is a very... This is a very a place that hold, holds a spot in my heart, definitely. I felt very inspired, like randomly, back in 2011 to come out here. It was just when I started, I started kind of going through the ascension process and whatnot, and I just felt like, I felt like called here. Like, it was intriguing on a psychological level, but also I felt just like connected to it in a sense. And also just reading about it, it was so intriguing because this place is said to have a very spiritual quality type of energy to it. In fact, there's a name for it. They call it vortex energy. They say that this is a spot, one of the many spots on the planet that is very abundant with this vortex, this is earth energy that kind of emanates out of it. And uh, this place I was just at right now, Bell Rock, this is one of the vortex locations, like a sacred spot basically. And people go around, they kind of look for these vortexes and stuff. And I personally don't feel them the way people say. Um, I feel like it's just the, the place, the city itself, the Sedona as a whole, is just like a... It's, uh, it definitely has the energy to it. A very noticeable, high, high vibration energy. And then just the beauty and the landscape and everything is just sort of a representation of that higher frequency. It's not just that there's cool mountains or that it's greener than you would expect for a lot of people think Arizona is like just all desert. It's not very, uh, there's a lot of nice forest and whatnot. It's not anything in particular. It's just the way it all kind of comes together. Just there's a harmony with, there's a, it's all beautiful by itself, but there's just a harmony and grace to this place combined with the positive, amazing energy. It just, uh, I highly, I just want to kind of recommend it, man. I know almost anyone watching this will feel it. You're plenty sensitive enough to feel what this place is all about. And it is a very healing type of place. Just spending time here, I can just feel a change in my vibration, a change in my, my clarity and just the, my consciousness. I just feel so open. And, but it's not always like that for me when I first get here. Usually when I get here, I feel very agitated and disruptive and emotional, almost like it takes me a period to adjust to the new frequency, which, which kind of lets you know it's good and strong. Um, but once, once there's that period of adjustment, it's just like, it's awesome. Anyways, I won't keep rambling. I know some of you guys probably don't give two shits about Sedona, Sedona but I know, uh, again, I, I, I know it's a place that you guys would definitely dig for sure. So I just wanted to kind of share my, my, own, my own personal subjective take on Sedona. There's a lot of different ways people talk about it. That's just kind of, it's also really uh, a lot of neat crystal stores and psychic shops, like the whole, every all the shops are very spiritual oriented so you, you'll feel right at home here <laughs> so anyways guys i'll see you peace